Most people who walk into gold country believe they are searching for metal. In reality, they are being tested by the ground itself. Gold prospecting does not fail loudly. It fails quietly. It fails in the small decisions made before the first pan ever touches water. And by the time most beginners realize what went wrong, the land has already taught its lesson. The mistake is rarely effort. It is rarely intelligence. It is almost always misunderstanding. Gold does not behave the way beginners expect it to behave. It does not sit where it looks valuable. It does not reward excitement. And it does not appear simply because someone wants it badly enough. Gold moves according to forces that have nothing to do with human desire. Gravity decides where it settles. Water decides how it travels. Time decides whether it remains accessible or disappears into the earth again. Beginners arrive with energy and optimism, but also with assumptions that quietly work against them. They assume gold is obvious. They assume it is evenly distributed. They assume if it were present, they would see signs immediately. The land does not correct these assumptions. It simply stays silent. One of the earliest moments where beginners lose their advantage happens before they even begin searching. They choose where to look based on appearance instead of process. They are drawn to bright quartz, dramatic outcrops, and visually striking terrain, believing that value must look valuable. But geology rarely advertises. Some of the most productive gold ground in the world looks unimpressive, weathered, and forgotten. Flat washes with no sparkle, rust-stained ridges that appear dead, gravel bars that show nothing but monotony. Gold does not form in places designed to impress the eye. It forms in places designed by physics. When beginners overlook this, they begin prospecting emotionally instead of analytically. They move too quickly. They test shallowly. They abandon ground long before its story has revealed itself. Every empty pan feels like confirmation that the land is barren, when in reality it is simply unspeaking. Gold concentration is rarely continuous. It is discontinuous by nature. There may be nothing for meters, sometimes hundreds of meters, followed by a sudden pocket where gravity has done its work perfectly. Beginners often leave just before reaching that pocket, they do not yet understand that empty ground is often part of productive ground. They believe success should arrive early, and when it does not, doubt takes over. That doubt is expensive. Another quiet mistake appears in how beginners interpret rust, iron staining, and oxidized rock. They associate rust with decay, exhaustion, and failure. They see red, brown, and yellow soils and assume whatever value once existed has already been destroyed or removed. But rust is not destruction, it is evidence. Oxidation tells a story of exposure, fluid movement, and chemical reaction. It marks places where minerals have interacted with oxygen and water over long periods of time. Gold often travels alongside iron-rich systems. When those systems oxidize, they leave behind visible signals on the surface. Those signals are not random. They follow fractures, faults, and pathways that once carried mineral-rich fluids upward. Beginners see ugly ground and move on. Experienced prospectors slow down. The mistake is not just avoidance, it is misinterpretation. Rust does not mean the gold is gone. In many systems, it means the opposite. It means the upper layers have broken down, potentially releasing gold that was once locked inside harder rock. Gold survives oxidation, Iron does not. That difference matters. When beginners dismiss rusty ground, they remove entire geological systems from consideration. They reduce their search area not by intelligence, but by misunderstanding. Another silent error happens in how beginners sample ground. They believe speed equals efficiency. They believe covering more area increases the chance of success. But gold does not reward movement. It rewards attention. Gold deposits are rarely spread evenly. They are clustered, localized, and influenced by very specific conditions. 
Sampling widely without understanding those conditions produces noise, not clarity. When beginners take a pan here, another there, and then move on again, they never allow patterns to emerge. They never stay long enough to learn what the material is telling them. An empty pan does not mean failure, it means information. But information only becomes useful when compared against consistent sampling. Without that consistency, every result feels random. Randomness discourages. Discouragement leads to quitting. The land remains unchanged. There is also a common misunderstanding about tools. Beginners often believe better equipment compensates for limited experience. They invest in detectors, advanced pans, and specialized gear, assuming technology will reveal what knowledge has not. But tools amplify decisions. They do not replace judgment. A detector cannot tell you whether the ground is worth detecting. A pan cannot compensate for poor location choice. Technology responds to conditions that already exist. It does not create opportunity. When beginners trust tools more than observation, they become reactive instead of analytical. They chase signals instead of understanding why signals appear where they do. Gold responds to density and gravity long before it responds to technology. Another subtle mistake lies in how beginners perceive time. They treat prospecting as a short-term activity measured in hours and days. They expect results within a narrow window, but gold operates on geological time. It forms slowly, it migrates slowly, and it reveals itself slowly. Many productive areas do not reward the first visit. They reward return visits, seasonal changes, and accumulated understanding. Beginners often leave an area forever based on a single experience. They do not account for water level changes, erosion cycles, or how floods rearrange material. They judge permanence based on a moment. The land does not operate in moments. There is also the mistake of focusing on extraction before understanding formation. Beginners are eager to recover gold before they fully understand how it arrived there in the first place. But recovery without understanding leads to inefficient effort. It turns prospecting into labor instead of strategy. Gold forms where conditions align, pressure drops, fluids cool, gravity takes control. If those conditions are not understood, recovery becomes guessing, and guessing is exhausting. Many beginners confuse effort with progress. They dig more, they work harder, they stay longer. But without alignment, effort only accelerates frustration. The most damaging mistake, however, is psychological. Beginners often believe failure is personal. They internalize empty pans as incompetence. They assume others are successful because of luck, access, or advantage. They do not realize that nearly every successful prospector failed repeatedly in the same way, but stayed long enough to learn. Gold prospecting does not reward confidence. It rewards humility. The ground teaches slowly and only to those willing to listen longer than they speak. Most people quit not because gold is absent, but because understanding arrives just after patience runs out. The land remains. The gold remains. Only the searcher leaves. Those who succeed are not immune to mistakes. They simply recognize them sooner. They stop chasing appearance and start reading process. They stop moving emotionally and start sampling deliberately. They stop fearing ugly ground and start interpreting it. And over time, something changes. The ground begins to speak, not loudly, not dramatically, but consistently. Patterns emerge, behavior makes sense, and gold stops feeling mythical. It becomes logical predictable, quiet. As experience replaces impatience, something subtle begins to happen in the mind of a prospector. The land no longer feels random. It begins to feel intentional. What once looked like chaos starts to organize itself into cause and effect. Ridges are no longer just ridges. Wash bends are no longer accidental curves. Rust, quartz, 
black sands, compacted gravels, and barren stretches begin to feel connected rather than isolated. This is where most beginners realize that the ground was never hiding anything. They simply were not yet trained to see it. Gold does not scatter itself freely. It obeys rules more strictly than almost any other natural material. Its density makes it stubborn. Its resistance to chemical breakdown makes it patient. Once it settles, it waits. When beginners learn this, their movements slow down. They stop chasing surface excitement and start following gravity's logic. They notice that gold prefers places where energy drops, inside bends of dry washes, behind natural barriers, below compacted layers that refuse to move easily. Another lesson emerges around time. They stop measuring success in minutes and hours. They start measuring it in understanding. A day with no gold but clear information becomes a productive day. A short visit that reveals structure becomes more valuable than a long visit chasing uncertainty. The land becomes a long-term conversation rather than a single transaction. Tools finally fall into their proper place, not as saviors, but as extensions. Detectors become filters, not answers. Pans become confirmations, not hopes. Experience becomes the primary instrument, and then quietly something changes again. Gold appears, not dramatically, not in cinematic fashion, but consistently enough to remove doubt. A few colors at first, then a repeat appearance, then a pattern. At that moment, beginners realize the truth most never reach. Gold was never rare. Understanding was. The land did not reward luck. It rewarded alignment. This is why the most dangerous beginner mistake is not digging in the wrong place. It is leaving too early because prospecting success is rarely found by those who search harder. It is found by those who search longer with better questions. The ground tests patience before it reveals value. It filters people, not effort. Those who fail are not rejected, they simply withdraw. Those who succeed stay quiet, methodical, and curious. They know gold does not rush, so neither do they. And perhaps the most important realization comes last. Gold prospecting is not about metal, it is about reading time frozen into earth. It is about understanding forces that worked for millions of years before you arrived and will continue long after you leave. Gold is just the receipt. The real reward is learning how the land thinks. Because once you understand that, you stop chasing gold. You start predicting it. And when that happens, the ground no longer feels silent. It feels honest.